Organizational units are the key to managing your Google Workspace domain effectively. Let me share some of the lessons that I've learned as I've helped other school districts set up their admin console. Hi, my name is John Sawash. Welcome back to the Google Admin Bootcamp. This video here is probably the most important foundational video of this entire channel. All of the Google Admin Console rests on your understanding of organizational units or OUs. Now, essentially, an OU is simply a folder in which you place a user or a device. You cannot apply policy settings, permissions, and security settings to individual users and devices. You can only apply those settings to an OU in which that user sits. So having the appropriate OU structure is essential to helping you manage your students, your teacher accounts, your devices, if they're in carts or one-to-one, -one, this is really important. Now, the organizational units can be managed inside of the directory in your admin console. So open up the directory and then you'll see organizational units down there. Now mine is already set up. I've helped many districts do this. You might be in one of two positions. Either you're brand new and you're setting this up for the first time, or you've inherited an admin console from someone else and you're just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. We're gonna talk about both of those scenarios here in just a minute. Now everybody starts with one organization unit. That's just your root uh, OU, this is the one at the very top. Um, and if you make any changes to this OU here, it applies to every user, every device in your organization. We wanna make sure that we split that out a little bit more to give us the control that we need to apply different policies for our students, our staff, administrators, IT uh, personnel, um, et cetera. Now creating an OU is super easy. Uh, simply click that little yellow button up there and type in the organization unit. There's no settings here. There's nothing to configure. You just give it a name. And later on, you'll be adding your devices, adding your users, and you'll select which organizational unit you want to place them in. Now, one of the key things about OUs is that they can be nested. So you can have sub OUs and you can have sub, sub, sub accounts. Um, and that's very helpful and very useful. So you can see like, I have this elementary OU, and then inside of that elementary OU, I have sub OUs for the student accounts. Now, I'm going to jump over into Google Docs, and we're going to talk about the strategy for how you might want to create your organizational units. Now, this video here is specifically designed for uh, schools, and so we have different policies and different requirements than perhaps a business uh, might or nonprofit, but the basic idea is the same. You'll just have to apply this uh, to your unique situation. Now, I'm going to go through two different examples here, a simple one for a small school or if you're just getting started, and then a second example that's more complex for a larger uh, district with multiple buildings and, and lots of different divisions. At a bare minimum, the absolutely bare minimum that you need would be three organizational units, one for staff, one for students, and one for devices. Now, the device one is even a little controversial. Some people will say that you don't need it, and they might be right, depending on the situation. We'll talk more about devices here in a second. We know that we're gonna be applying different policies to our, uh, our student accounts, and our teacher, our staff accounts. And so at minimum, we need two different buckets, two different folders so we can apply those policies. Devices is optional if, uh, if you have uh, Chromebooks that you're managing as well. Now, that's pretty minimal. I would go a little bit further than that. Um, you're definitely going to need an uh, OU for your IT department. So there's going to be some special settings that they're going to need access to, uh, that you're going to need access to. And so I would create an IT department one. And then I always recommend creating an inactive OU. So when a, a teacher leaves your district, um, you can freeze their account, place them in that OU, and hold it there for uh, the time being. Now, students is a little bit different. Um, depending on your school, if you're a K-12 school, you're probably going to have different policies for your elementary students, your middle school students, and perhaps your high school students. So it might be wise under the student organizational unit to go ahead and set up an elementary, middle, and a high school OU. Now, this is pretty unique to the K-12 industry. Our user base is constantly moving through our organization and eventually leaving. Every year, one twelfth 
approximately, of our district, of our employees, if you will, are leaving. And so we need to be prepared for that. The best practice for setting up OUs for a school is to create graduation year organizational units in which you actually place the student accounts. Um, and so you can see elementary, they will be graduating from high school in the year 2030. So that'd be like kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Now for these three OUs here, my goal, I do not want to apply any settings. I don't want to configure Gmail or Chrome. I don't want to apply any settings to those graduation year OUs because eventually 2030 is going to move to middle school and then to high school. All of my grade level policies are going to be made at the elementary level, or if it's generic for all students, will be made up here at the student level. Now, your elementary students will probably have very limited access. They might not even have email turned on for them, so we can turn off Gmail for elementary. But then when they move to the middle school, we just move the 2030 OU from where it is down to here, and magically Gmail is now enabled and they're allowed to email their um, teachers. When they move to high school, again, we're just slowly going to move that OU down to the high school level. Now they have full access to Gmail so they can submit college applications and dual enrollment programs. So as they move through, the policies change and we're applying, configuring those policies at the you know, high school level, here at the middle school level, uh, and so on. That's the most effective way to handle your student organizational units. Now, I do, again, recommend that you have an inactive student OU. These are for graduated students or students who've left the district. I usually freeze them in there for maybe a year, and then if they don't return, I'll delete uh, those accounts eventually. Let's talk about devices for a minute. Um, Having a device OU really just depends on how you're um, managing your devices. If you are in a cart-based setting, then you probably are going to want to create OUs for each of your carts so that you can, you know, make changes to the cart that's in the third grade hallway or in the media center. If you're one-to-one, -one, then I would set up my um, devices kind of like my students. I'll have an elementary, middle, and high school section and then um, assign those devices individually uh, to the student. You might have some staff accounts um, as well for Chromebooks that are assigned to staff members and then I also create what I call the uh, Chromebook penalty box or the restricted OU which uh, students who abuse their technology permissions will have limited access uh, to certain features. That's kind of my simple setup, real basic setup for a school. Maybe you don't have a high school, maybe you're a K-8 school, and you'll be able to even shorten that further. This next example is much more complex. It contains multiple buildings. So we have the same basic uh, system. We have a staff um, OU, we have a student OU, we have the graduation years, but this particular one has multiple elementary schools. And so Underneath elementary, I've subdivided it into Worth Elementary and all the grades that are there. And then we have Worthwood Elementary and those grades as well. This does add more complexity to your organizational units. However, it does provide more flexibility in being able to specifically set policies for a building. So if the building principal says, hey, my students are um, being distracted by YouTube, I can go in and make changes that only apply to this building. Um, whereas if I had them all grouped together in just elementary, I would not have um, that capability. So if you're a larger district, adding that building layer might be um, useful. Now here's uh, what I was talking about earlier with the carts. So if you're in a cart-based setting, you might want to set it up like this. So again, I have the elementary Chromebook carts and then divided by building and then the carts uh, within that building itself. Now all of this can be done inside of the admin console. We can move and rearrange our organizational units. Um, we can collapse them down, which is nice. Um, and so if I need to create an OU inside of another one, I can use this plus button right here. Um, as your students are matriculating through your school, they move from elementary to middle school, I can click on an OU, select the move button, and then I can move that OU up to the middle and then eventually into the high school um, as necessary. 
So all of the organizational units uh, can be arranged in here. Now I want to speak to those of you who have inherited the admin console and you're trying to figure out what's going on. You don't know where the settings or policies are even located at and you're trying to redesign your organizational units. I've got a, a suggestion that makes it fairly easy to do that. What I'm going to do is create a new organizational unit and I'm going to name that um, OU new OU structure. And that's going to be right under the root, so all the way up at the top. Now inside of that organizational unit that I just created, I'm going to build out all of my OU structures. Essentially, I'm going to pretend like the OU that's called new OU is the root of my domain and rebuild everything. Now, there's no students in there, there's no user accounts, there's no devices, so I really can't screw anything up because I haven't placed anybody in there. I'm going to build all of my uh, OUs, apply all of my policy settings, and then when I'm ready, maybe during the summer, I will begin moving the user accounts from their existing OUs into the new OU structure, we'll move it up to the top, the root level, and then long term, eventually, I will delete the old OUs once I have removed all the devices and users from them. So that's what I would do if I was redesigning an OU structure for an existing domain uh, that someone else had set up. Now, organization units, again, are foundational to everything else in the admin console. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about setting up your Google Admin domain, go ahead and uh, check out the Google Admin Bootcamp, my in-depth training on all things related to the admin console. If you're interested in more admin tips like this, check out this video up here.